Okay, it was all working. All right, well, good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us. As I said, I'm Steve Titi from the University of Chicago Computation Institute. And this morning, I'm um, just going to spend a little time uh, taking you through a service that uh, we've, we've created here called Globus Online, which uh, University of Michigan has adopted within its research computing organization. And so I'm basically just going to give you a quick tour of the Globus Online service uh, and how it might help you out with using uh, your cluster University of Michigan and elsewhere. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So first let's just talk about the problem that we're trying to solve. <clears throat> I imagine most of you, since you're attending this, this webinar, you know, you're users of HPC clusters, whether it's at Michigan or elsewhere. Um, and of course, one of the challenges that we run into in using these big clusters and other systems is just getting our big data where it needs to be. Right? So if I've got terabytes of data or tens of gigabytes, hundreds of gigabytes, um, maybe it comes from a scientific instrument, maybe it's from a simulation that I need to move back home, maybe it's, you know, who knows, right? There's all these cases where I need to move data at various places, and this should be a trivial operation, right? I mean, we're used to, in our home environments, things like Netflix, right, where I just fire it up on the web and it just works, right? I don't think about the fact that I'm transferring tons of data to watch my movie, right? It just works, and that's how it should be. The challenge, of course, <clears throat> is that in the research computing world, this activity that should be trivial, unfortunately, is often pretty painful, right? That there's all sorts of interesting configuration and networking and firewall issues that you have to deal with if you want to get your data you know, between your HPC cluster and, say, a national facility like you know, an Exceed, like TAC or NCSA, or if you want to get it to your own department machine or down to your laptop or desktop, right? All these things just go wrong, particularly when you're talking really big data, right? It's very common for things to fail, so you have to worry about restarting yourself, right? So what should be trivial can often be all too painful. And so this is the problem that we decided a couple of years ago to jump into trying to attack, right? And to try and come at it from a new direction, right? We've spent, in the Globus group here at Argonne and University of Chicago, we've spent, you know, the better part of a decade and a half working on sort of core infrastructure for things like high-performance data transfer that's at the heart of a lot of the big science grids. But we had never really tried to make it easy for any end user just to adopt it and use it on their own. And so that's what we decided to do with Globus Online, right, is to create this reliable file transfer service where no IT is required, right? Where you, you know, if you know how to use your laptop, that should be sufficient to make this thing work. So on the reliable file transfer side, just cover a few features or the core concepts, right, the model is what we think is fire and forget, right? If you look at the picture on the right here, I'm a user, I want to initiate a transfer. The idea is I can use various GUIs and command line interfaces, which I'll show you in just a few minutes in a live demo, to submit this request into the Globus Online cloud. Right? So the first thing you recognize about Globus Online is this is software as a service, like Gmail, like Google Docs, like Netflix. Right? It's a service that's out there in the, on the internet, in the cloud, that you access through a simple, thin client like a browser, or as I'll show you, SSH. All right, so I hand off my request into Globus Online, and the idea is it takes care of it for me, right? It talks to the two places I want to do my data transfer, my source and destination, and manages the movement of the data between them securely, reliably, recovering for failures, tuning it for high performance to make good use of our high-speed networks that we were, happy, were lucky to have in the, the research community. And you notice in this picture, you have a line going straight from source to destination. The data does not flow through Globus Online. The data flows directly from the source to destination. Globus Online just manages the transfer, sort of watches it, triggers it, watches what's happening, restarts it, all the things to make sure that it can take care of things. And then notifies the user, step three here, when something, when it's either done or there's something that the user really needs to intervene and know about. All right, so that's the model. As I said, we, we take care of fault recovery, take care of tuning this. So if you're familiar with past Globus tools like Globus Earl Copy, right, you don't need to know any of that stuff. Right? You don't need to know how to tweak it and tune it for getting all the right performance. We take care of that. And a key thing that we also solved with Globus Online is making it work cleanly across security domains. Right? So 
you know, we have lots of accounts, right? I've got my University of Chicago account and my Computation Institute account within the university and my Exceed account that gets me to various NSF supercomputers and my NERSC account at, you know, at DOE centers and my Google account, right? And all of these are, are resources that I want to sort of bring into the mix. And so for this to really work properly, for me to get my data where anywhere I need it to be, it needs to work cleanly across security domains. And so that's been a big focus that you'll see in the demo that we've solved as well. As I said, as from the IT is no IT required, right? We deliver a software as a service. It's a service that we run at the University of Chicago. We make available as a service to the community for free. Um, we have a help desk support behind it, you know, ticket system. We have experts who, when things go wrong, they can dive in and help troubleshoot. You know, for example, just in the last few days, there's been some crazy networking issue with a machine at Nix, and it looks like, you know, if you're a networking person, it looks like MTU mismatches and packets aren't flowing correctly, right? This is the sort of stuff that drives end users crazy, but this is the sort of stuff that we have the, the people the, the, the know how this stuff works and can work with the resource providers to debug and resolve these issues so that things just work for you. Works with any Grid FTP server out there, right? Grid FTP's been around for a long time as a standard server, real robust system that's in use on pretty much all the major supercomputing centers out there and an increasing number of campuses, not just in the US, but internationally. But in addition, we've had to step up and solve what we think was last mile problem. Not just make it easy to move data between my supercomputing centers, but also to my laptops, to my desktop, to my lab server, my Linux box sitting in the corner of my lab, right? We've got to make the data easy to get anywhere you need it. So that's what we're doing with Globus Online. As a use case, um, actually I'll pause here just a second and mention if you have questions along the way, we do have a chat window, and I'll also introduce a couple people that are in the chat. Uh, Mary Bass, who I want to thank for setting this up, and Brock is there, and then I believe Raj Ketamuthu. Yep, I see him on the list. Raj is part of our team that helps uh, solve a lot of issues, so feel free to type questions in the chat window, and Raj can answer them in real time, and then at the, at the end we'll also have some time for Q&A as well if he doesn't catch all of your questions in the process. So. Let's jump to a case study, right? So why does this stuff matter? What is it good for, right? This is a, it was a user, a, a um, Lattice QCD researcher out of Indiana who had done a bunch of simulation runs on Kraken, which is a supercomputer at Nix in, in Tennessee, and need to get about six terabytes of simulation results to a visualization cluster in Texas. And, you know, didn't want to have to deal with this. And the, the punchline of this slide is really that quote down in the lower left corner. Globus Online frees up my time to do more creative work than typing SCP commands or devising scripts to do this stuff, right? Just fired up, just worked, you know, and he came back and it was done. You know, from Center's perspective, um, you know, I could easily change this slide now to enabling users at University of Michigan, right? It's that we provide a service that as a center provider it makes it easy for you to provide a better capability to your users, right? You kind of don't have to do anything, just get the, the, the grid FTP server up and, and some of that, and you're off and running. And so we're seeing tremendous adoption of this capability, both within, the, as I said, the national facilities like the, the Exceeds and, and DOE and others, as well as seeing a ton of adoption within the campuses. So it really pleases how this has really taken off. So we have a lot of you know, amazing feedback on this. You can go to our website if you want to kind of see these case studies and how, you know, how people are using it and what, what they're seeing. So but with that, let's get on to a demo. It's much more interesting to actually see it live. All right, so it's software as a service. I go to a web browser, right? So this is just a Chrome browser, works in all the, oops, I saw a little hiccup on, the uh, Adobe Connect, um, just checking, make sure that everyone's still there before I keep going. All right, yep, looks like things are okay still. Um, good, sorry about that. I just saw my, I have a secondary window that shut down and came back with my Adobe Connect. All right, so, <clears throat> As I said, this is software as a service. So like any software as a service, we pull up a web browser. We're using Chrome here. We can use you know, Chrome, Safari, IE, I think 8 and beyond. 
um, on all the different platforms. All right, so what you'd expect. Now, the website, if you want more details about stuff, we have these links at the bottom, you know, why you use Globus Online. They'll take you into some of the more material, like, you know, case studies, features, quotes, uh, you know, this sort of stuff. We have some online tutorials, for example, like a recorded version of basically this tutorial, various news and events, facts, contact us, right? So just good stuff to resources. But let's actually just jump in and use it. So as a new user, of course, the first thing I need to do is sign up, right? I'm going to take this from the perspective of brand new. I have no Globus anything software on my laptop. It's just a standard Mac uh, running Chrome in this case. And I'm just going to start from first principles, right? So we first go to the sign up in the upper right corner and create an account. So just one simple form. I think I'm on 23 now with my demos. Terms of service. And then if you want to get updates, uh, you know, we won't spam you, but we'll give you just useful updates on things going on. Click on that box and hit register. Oops, I guess I already have used 23. So let's try 24. There we go. All right. So I've now got a Globus Online account that's taken me to the dashboard. So the first thing you'll see the first time when you come in, when you create a new account on this upper left side is, please stand by while your file, while your file transfer account is created. What's happening here is Globus Online isn't just one server in one closet running this. We're actually running on Amazon redundant systems across multiple, actually we have order of eight to 10 virtual machines handling different parts of the system and redundancy for it. Right, so we built this as a reliable, scalable service that can really serve sort of an arbitrary large community that we can scale out with it. So what's happening here is your account is just provisioning out to a few of these machines. It just takes a few seconds here uh, to get it done. Now, other things we see on this on the pan on the dashboard, of course, on the right side, some events coming up with Globus World coming up in March. You know, a good place, particularly for developers, administrators, uh, to to dig in and see how other people are using it. And then down the middle, the main functions that we have, start transfer, view transfers, manage our endpoints, you'll understand that a bit more, manage your profile, and Globus Connect, which is that last mile solution I'll actually show in a few minutes. All right, so we see the transfer service been activated, so let's go ahead and do something. Let's do a start, let's do a transfer. So I click on start transfer. I can also nav around using the drop down at the top here. Um, if I want to get to my profile, I can always also click on my login name up here in the corner. So let's actually do a transfer. And so we have a fairly standard to transfer panel window from source destination. First thing I need to do is put in an endpoint. What is an endpoint? Right? An endpoint is what we call a system that I want to do a transfer to or from. Right? It's something out there that's running a grid FTP server that's been configured in for use with Globus Online. Anybody can create an endpoint. Um, sites, end users, anything. And when you create an endpoint, by default, not everybody sees them, but you can make them available to others. So what many groups have done is created endpoints, you know, giving them a short, simple name that makes them very easy for end users to find, right? So for example, if I type exceed, you know, this is the exceed account has created a whole set of endpoints for different users. Of course, if I do Michigan, type you Mich, there's the, the systems at University of Michigan. I don't have, actually have an account on them, so I won't be able to show you a demo on those, but I'll show you ones just like them. So everything you'll see will look just like uh, with this cluster. Um, all right, so lots of different systems out there. Uh, if you're not you know, ALCF, Argon user, NERSC, right? And I'll show you later a little bit of how you create your own. Well, let's actually do a transfer. So let's take, I'll take a machine off of Exceed. You know, go to Trestles, which is a, one of the Exceed machines and select it. Now. This is the first time I've used this machine from Globus Online, right? I haven't done any pre-configuration. I have an Exceed account. I need to go log in, right? So I need to log into Exceed and, and get what we call like a short-term ticket that allows Globus Online to interact with the Exceed resources on my behalf for a short period of time. We call this activating the endpoint, right? So that's what I'm doing here. So I have to activate this Exceed endpoint. I need to log into it. So I hit continue. Now what we'll see here is um, a, it's going to redirect my browser. If you're familiar with like Facebook type logins from third party websites, exactly the same approach technologies under the covers. Right. So 
log in with my Exceed account, standard Exceed portal password, and it'll redirect me right back to my site. So now I'm logged into Trestles. Now if I go to another Exceed resource, it's not going to ask me for that again because it's now got my password for a short period of time. But let's actually go to another site. So I'll, you know, I'll go to my own campus uh, machine here. So we have um, here at Argonne, uh, we have a, a thing called the LCRC, which is the research computing group runs a cluster, moderate size cluster here at Argonne called Fusion. So let's actually go ahead and try that out. So again, I just go to that cluster. Now in this case, again, I need to activate the endpoint. I haven't logged into this machine yet. The technologies under this one are slightly different. This is some older MyProxy stuff that we're gradually evolving the community toward the OAuth. But process is still basically the same. I just type in my exceed my uh, LCRC password, right? So here, this is what you would see on the University of Michigan cluster, where you would just type in your own University of Michigan username and password here. Hit authenticate. Oops, I missed, must have mistyped it. And we're logged into that cluster, right? So now I can do standard things you'd expect in a file browser. Right? I can double click on on directories to drill into them. I can select multiple items if I want by holding down the command key while doing it. Shift will give me selecting regions, select none, up a folder, right? All the all the kind of standard browsery stuff. So let's uh, go ahead and just fire up a transfer. Let's take this go data one directory and transfer it over to Fusion. Right? So all I did there was selected the source, hit the blue button to transfer from the left side to the right side. You can go either direction. And you notice at the top, um, we've got a, a error message that says transfer request submitted successfully. Right? Doesn't mean the transfer is done. Right? It means that I've submitted this request off to Globus Online. I've handed it off, and now it's working on it. So we can jump over to the view transfers window and see how things are progressing, right? So it looks like it's already done. It was just a small little directory, uh, four files. If I want to drill in more, I can click on the progress bar, see a little bit more details, you know, source, destination, number of bytes transferred, number of files, how many retries it had to do, things like that. I can even go into really detailed event logs where I can find out all the, you know, if there are any faults that it recovered from, what progress it's making, I can get all that information. It's all there available to me now. In practice, hopefully you won't need that too much. So there we did our first transfer, right? So just to summarize what we did, right, in about you know, five, seven minutes with a fair amount of talking to explain things, you know, I came in to Glowis Online. I created a brand new account. I logged into two different security domains, one on Exceed, one on my local Argon campus cluster, and did a transfer between them, right? And it just worked. One couple other things just to show you quickly on this transfer panel. You'll notice this drop down at the top of the window. We actually have a few options, right? What I did in that first one was just a simple transfer where the source overwrites the destination files. But we have other alternatives for synchronizing data. So for example, I can say only copy files that don't exist on the destination. So if I modify the source but want to update those new files, can check size on the source, and I can go all the way up to doing full checksums, MD5 checksums on the source and destinations, and only transfer what you know what doesn't match. So let's do that just for the fun of it, right? So I can take that same go data directory. Let me refresh this list so we should see there's the go data one directory we just created. And so let's do another one with the checksums on. Right? Jump back over to the transfer window, you know, refresh it quickly here. And now that one's off and running, right? If we look at the event log, you know, we see that it's doing directory scan, starting sync scan, right? So it's deciding what it needs to transfer, right? So all good, off and running. So, and there it's done, right? And I think we drill into it. We can see, um, you know, it's done, found three files, no bytes transferred, right? Because all the files I had already done. Right? So really easy ways to keep multiple machines synchronized uh, with your data. So, so that's all good. We could just did transfers between various centers, but as we talked about before, you know, that's only half the story, right? I also need often my data on my laptop or my desktop where I want to do some local visualization or my lab servers, right? 
No problem. This is what we have Globus Connect for. So you can get Globus Connect either, you notice down in the lower right hand corner of the file transfer window, it's also in the dashboard, you can get it from there. Let's go ahead and put it on my laptop and I'll do a transfer from there up to the Fusion cluster. So to do that, I hit Globus, get Globus Connect, and it's a very simple process. First thing is binary, you have to download a little uh, agent. Right? If you're familiar with a service like Dropbox, as you can see I run Dropbox here for all my basic files, right? it's just like that. It's a little agent that runs in the background. It's not a client. I never interact with it directly aside from sort of setting up some local preferences, but it just runs in the background. We have binaries for Mac OS, for Linux, for Windows, tested on a zillion different flavors of those going back quite a few versions. So I'm running a Mac here, so let's grab it. We'll download it. Open it up here. And then if you're a Mac user, you'll recognize all this. Simple drag and drop installer. For Windows, we have a Windows installer. On Linux, we have both a simple GUI installer, or a simple GUI. It's a tarball on Linux, but we have a simple GUI for using it. We also can use it from the command line. Um, so I just installed it into my applications folder. Let's go start it up. And the one thing I'm asked for is a setup key. Okay. How do I get that setup key? I just go back to the web browser, enter in whatever endpoint name I want to give it, right? And by default, nobody's going to see this endpoint. So I'll just call it my laptop. Put in whatever I want here for a description. Generate setup key. Copy. Paste. And we are up. All right, so you see up in the top now, there's an icon for Globus Connect. Um, I can check for updates, you know, auto update, or let's go into the preferences, right? So preferences panel, particularly useful one you should probably know about is this access tab. By default, what you'll have access to is full read-write access to your home directory on your laptop. If you want to add other ones, simply hit the plus and add them, right? So if you want to add other directories or things like that to your machine, if you have an external USB disk or something like that, you know, you just select that in here and it'll make it available and you can make it read or writable. Right? So my laptop's now on. Close that. Now all I have to do is go to Tiki24, my laptop, and we're on. Right, so this is a directory listing on my laptop, just to prove it. There's, hopefully you'll see a lot of common files between that listing on my local machine and that. Right, now everything is the same. Right, it's just a service now running in the background. So I can say take this GT2 directory from my laptop and let's upload that to Fusion. Right. Submitted the transfer, checked the view, stat, view transfers window, and we're now off and running. Right. We drill in, we can see from my laptop to Fusion. This is a much bigger directory. I know it's got some thousands of files, so we'll just let that chug along in the background while we're doing the rest of the demo. So hopefully you've now seen how simple it is to get Globus Connect on your own laptop. And just to sort of finish off sort of that story, I can do a similar thing on a Linux machine off at University of Chicago. So for example, we've got a machine. This is a little Linux server at University of Chicago, you know, I can log in with my SSH key. Right, on this machine, I think it looks like I've already got the Globus Connect tarball here. I already downloaded it to here once before for a, for a demo. Let me make sure I deleted my previous configuration on it. Yep, looks like I did. So all I have to do is untar this. So this is exactly what you do if you want to do this yourself on your own Linux box with a command line. Go into Globus Connect 1.0, run dot slash Globus Connect, and then the process is the same. I need a setup key. So again, just go pop right back to the window here, go back into the panel. I already downloaded it so I don't have to do that. So let's call this one My Linux, generate setup key, copy and paste, Now it's set up. Now I just need to start it. I can check the status of it at any point, see if it's running. Yep, there's one running there. So now 
I've just put that Linux machine on. This will work. All these Globus Connects will work behind firewalls, behind NATs, um, all that kind of stuff, right? So now, if I go here, we see now I have my Linux is available also. I can select that, and there's that Linux box we were just talking about. So let's now take, uh, let's, for the fun of it, let's just do a single bigger file. So let's take, you know, let's, I don't have anything huge, let's take that uh, Globus Connect uh, latest, and we'll copy that over to Fusion also. Right. So now I'm doing a, if I refresh this window, see how things are progressing, right? So there's the new one I just started from my Linux box over at Computation Institute. There's the previous one doing the upload for my laptop. And if you can see subtly on that little icon up on the Globus Connect, you can see it sort of flashing like it's rotating there. So that means it's actually doing a transfer right now. Right. So great, we're, uh, we're off and running with multiple transfers. Done it from my laptop, from Linux box to lab cluster between supercomputing centers. The only limitation we have today on where you can transfer to is between two Globus Connects that you put on different machines. Um, technical reasons is because they're both always doing outbound connections, so one of the endpoints has to be sort of has to be connect, you know, have to be able to connect to it. So that's something we've got on our list to solve that one as well, but we don't have it at the moment. We also have just to mention, I'm not going to spend any time on this in demo, but I'll just mention it for any of you that might have your own little clusters or servers that you want to enable for multiple users, we have something called Globus Connect Multi-User. Um, it's on our website. If we go down to, I have to find it somewhere on our resources site. Let me jump back over to that site. Well, actually, I know the URL. That's probably easier. All right, so globusonline.org GCMU. Right, what this is is exactly the same software that the U Michigan clusters are running, that NERSC is running, that all these machines, it's basically a combination of the grid FTP server and a simple identity manager that takes care of that local login step that you saw when I went to activate, say, my NERSC resource or that you'll see on the UMich resource. Um, so this makes it really trivial if you have your own multi-user machines that you want all of your users to be able to use just like any endpoint. It's very trivial install process you're off and running. If you want to do it more advanced stuff, we have a new version of Globus Toolkit now with native Debian and Red Hat packaging and binaries. We're working to push it all upstream into Apple and, and all that sort of stuff. So you can even do more advanced con, uh, installations with that sort of stuff. Um, I'm seeing on the, the chat window, it looks like Brock saying he's helped a few of the admins on campus set up this. So if you have any questions, uh, look on the chat window. You'll see Brock's uh, note about where to email if you need some help getting GCMU up on your own systems. All right, so you've now seen a you know, pretty good tour of stuff. Um, maybe one of the very last thing I'll show you in the web GUI, because it's useful from time to time, is we also have a, uh, a panel for managing endpoints. Right? And where this is useful is a few di different things. One is you can sort of see, you know, these are the endpoints I've used from this account, so sort of my favorites. I can see what endpoints are in use. Looks like my transfers must have all completed at this time if it's saying that uh, yeah, all my transfers are done, so none of them are in use at the moment. I can also go and administer them. So this is, for example, where I can delete endpoints that I've created. Another really important thing from time to time that you need, this is also where you can update credentials. So remember what I said when I activate an endpoint, what I'm doing is getting this short-term ticket that I can use with a machine that Globus Online can use on my behalf for a period of time. But it times out, right? At which point I have to come back in and re-authenticate, reactivate my endpoint. I can do that basically from this GUI right here. In any of these panels, you'll see, um, you know, expires. So actually, if I go over to View All and show you all of them, we can see things like, you know, here's some other resource like ALCF, DTN. If I hit that, it'll take me through exactly the same activation process. So I can reactivate. If your transfer it doesn't complete by the time a credential expires. We won't kill your transfer. We'll just suspend it. We'll email you, tell you you just need to come back and log in, and we'll even give you the URL that will take you to basically to this screen, to the in-use screen with whatever endpoints you've got, and you can really quickly update them there. So this will be useful if you're running really long transfers. 
And we do see this quite a bit. So for example, we've got a transfer going right now that's been running for three months. They've been transferring a few hundred terabytes of data off a mass storage system at NCSA off to somewhere. I'm not even entirely sure where. And you know, so they, they have longer term credentials, so they only have to come back about once a week and refresh that. But we just take care of it. We've also done huge transfers, like we had one user a month or two back who did a transfer single file 12 million, sorry, single directory 12 million files under it. Right? Again, just took care of it. So that's the web GUI. Now, as I mentioned, we also have other interfaces. Behind this web GUI, we have a full REST interface that if you want to do more tighter integration, more advanced clients, you know, we have various science gateways, web portals, things like that that are integrating with the transfer service. The REST API is great for that. All of this web GUI that you're seeing here is just standard JavaScript, HTML, CSS, standard AJAX techniques using that public REST interface. So anything we're doing, you could do yourself uh, from your own custom web interfaces. But we also, of course, in this community, do a lot of scripting, right? And so one of the things we recognize with Globus Online is that we need to make scripting really easy for our users. And this led us to an, an interesting conundrum, right? Which is, you know, a mantra of software as a service is don't ship clients, right? Don't make users keep software and complex, especially complex software that can get out of date and all this sort of stuff. Try and keep as little footprint on the user's machine as possible. Obviously, we have Globus Connect as an agent there, but it's just an agent, you know, very minimal functionality, just enough to get your machine onto the network. Right, so that works for web, web browser with for web GUIs because we have browsers, right, that can draw all these fancy graphics for us. But what do we do is for command line? Well, for command line, you know, if you're a command line user, you know, dollars to donuts, you've probably got an SSH client on your machine. Right? So rather than shipping you a client that you have to install on your own machine to script, what we do is give every user an account on cli.globusonline.com. Org. Right. This is a restricted shell. Can't do anything you want, but it does allow you to do all everything you saw through the web interface. You can do through a command line interface and script it. Now, the first time I do this, it's not going to work. I haven't yet configured my Globus Online account to accept to to allow me to log in, and I do that using standard SSH keys. Right. So, if you're familiar with SSH, right, you know in my SSH directory I can set up my public private key identity. So all I need to do is just like I'm setting up any other machine that I want to allow SSH keys to work on, this is standard SSH, I take that public key, go over to my web GUI, and set up my profile with an additional identity. I go to this manage identities tab, add SSH public key, copy and paste that in, add SSH public key, and you notice the message, they'll take a few minutes to propagate. Same thing, it just has to propagate out to all the machines. So it'll just take a minute here. But what I'm doing now is configuring Globus Online so that now my standard SSH key that's on my laptop, in fact, the same one I used to log into my Computation Institute account, now I'll be able to log into my Globus Online command line interface. So while that's provisioning, let me just pop back to the slides for a moment and kind of explain what you know, what you're going to see, what you'll be able to do with this. And so, as I said, we've got this interactive login that you can log into and use. I'll show you that in just a second. But the real, I mean, that's really nice for sort of ad hoc interactive stuff if you're a command line head. But where its real power shows up is scripting, right? Is instead of running commands locally, when I want to run a command, all I do is prepend it with my SSH command. SSH run this command locally. So, for example, this third box is an example of doing an SSH to Globus Online. We have an SCP lookalike command that's using Globus Online, all the endpoints, all the reliability, has synchronization, all that kind of stuff. So it's sort of a, but it follows the semantics of the SSH interface, right? So if you're familiar with SSH, it'll work just like that. So what I'm saying here is run the Globus Online SCP between Nurse DTN and my laptop in these directories. And then I can monitor status and all that sort of stuff. Now, if you're also sort of a grid user, if you're familiar with you know, GSI SSH and tools like that, we also support GSI SSH. And this is really convenient. You know, whoops, 
accidentally swiped there. Um, this is really convenient if you're doing, say, remote, remote submission to exceed resources or job scripting using global services like Gram. You can now even have your jobs right you now from, you know, so for example, we have one job, one user, they're running a big simulation that's dumping output after every time step, a checkpoint. What they do is immediately after the time step is written, they do an SSH or GSI SSH out to Globus Online and tell it to transfer that job step off to some other machine. Right? So you can now start scripting these into your own batch interfaces. So should all be set up by now, so let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, so we did an SSH into my account, Tiki24 on CLI. Now we have a lot of good online help here. If you just type help, you'll see all the different commands. We have some for submitting transfers. As I said, we've got an SCP lookalike. We have a more advanced transfer command uh, where you can actually you know, put in, if you have 100,000 individual files that you want to name and, and, and support, or if you want more advanced features for tweaking and tuning, you can use that interface. We have commands for removing files, and RM is just like the Linux RM, and then delete is the more advanced version that looks a lot like transfer. So again, imagine you wanna, you know, you're writing some code where you wanna script the deletion of a whole bunch of files, no problem, just fire it into delete, and it'll do that reliably. We have task management things, so I can cancel requests and see the details, all the same sort of stuff I saw from my web interface. Endpoint management tools, so we can script this command line, um, or you can use the web GUI. And then various other things like LS and make deer, you know, standard sort of web you know, shell tools. So let's let's play around with some of these. So all the commands also have a short form help, minus H. So LS minus H shows me the options. We also have man pages for everything if you want the really detailed stuff. So let's go ahead and do a man or a LS on Tiki24. Hash uh, my laptop colon tilde. Oops, what I, oh, I think I know what I do. Uh, endpoint list. Oh, right. This were I've been used to the you know, in the moment. Well, right now, if it's your own endpoint, you don't specify your name. That will actually be allowed in the next version that's being released next week. So just a little. Nuance that always trips me up in this demo, right? So I just did ls on my laptop. We can also do things like ls minus al, you know, so I can get long form listings. And all of this is going out over grid FTP using the credentials that I'd entered in before. Um, if I try and use a new machine, it'll actually just prompt me, or if it if it does the OAuth, it'll just give me the URL I need to go to to activate my endpoint. So let's actually do a transfer from here. So let's take, oh, I don't know, let's take download, let's not download something from Fusion this time. So if we take uh, LCRC hash Fusion, see what we got out there. Let's do an SCP recursive of LCRC Fusion tilde slash, we'll, we'll, make, we'll keep this one a small one. Uh, so we'll take the go data and transfer it to my laptop colon tilde slash you mish demo. Um, if I want to add synchronization, I could do, well, might as well, why not? We'll add synchronization to this. Now, shouldn't actually, still should transfer everything, but I'm saying do full checksums on it. And let's fire it off, right? So it's going to do an interactive one just like SCP, but I can also do things like background it by typing BG. Right, so now it's off and running in the background. It gives me a task ID that I can use to track it. I can do things like status on it. I can do uh, high-level details. So, you know, for example, that details should look very familiar to you as the same sort of information I can get from the web inter interface when I click on the task bar with that sort of details. It's all the same system under the covers. Things you do on the web shows up in the CLI and vice versa. Right, so I can do all this sort of stuff from here. Status minus A will tell me all of my transfers, whether they're done or not, or only looks like that one's now complete. So great, I can do all these things uh, interactively. But as I said, the real power in this comes when I want to start scripting, right? 
And so what we've done is if you look at some of these commands like status, we have extra options on them like how I want to output it, you know, simple formats that make it easy for me to parse, what fields I want. So I can do things like say status minus a output in key value form and I can't remember the fields, all of them. So let's do status and task ID. So if I type it correctly, all right? So there's all my output in a nice key value form. So what I really want to do is from my own laptop, I want to write scripts that do things like that, right? SSH to Globus Online, run the status ID, pipe for grep for, I'll type for failed. There shouldn't be any, but, right? So you can start seeing how I can start writing scripts very easily, you know, in Bash or in Python or anything that just uses these, uses SSH to in, remotely invoke the CLI and do these things, right? So as an example, I won't go through this in, a lot, in much detail uh, in the interest of time, but this was a simple bash script that we wrote that we've used in longer tutorials where, you know, you can see, I guess the last time I did this was when I was, was 12 tutorials ago. Uh, we do an SSH out there. Our interfaces are fully versioned. So, you know, basically I'm saying, all my commands I'm submitting against the 1.2 version of the interface. So you can be confident that as we introduce new features, do new things in the CLI, any scripts you write will continue to work. We won't break things out from under you. Um, and then it, this one just submits some, sit, submit some jobs, right? So you can see here, it's doing an SSH, uh, running the, the longer transfer command. We actually have for reliable submission, you can generate your task ID and then submit in all the requests. There should be some stuff down below, you know, where you can see we're doing a, a wait on the task ID and details on it to see how it's doing, right? So you can just start scripting all of this into, you know, your workflows, into things that will submit, you know, transfer your data to the cluster, then run your job, and then transfer the output back. Or, as I mentioned earlier, transfer intermediate results back. Or every night from a cron job, do a synchronization of your cluster file system back to your to your department file system, right? All that really becomes straightforward with this tool. So that's I've sort of given you the tour of everything. So just to kind of wrap up then on the slides, and then we'll have a little bit of time for question and answer. You know, if you have questions, you know, encourage you to a just go out and try it, right? We have a lot of information on our website. But feel free also to send us email at support at Globus Online. Um, it's, a, it's a help desk ticket system. You know, we have you know, multi-level support where you know, we get a quick response. It'll escalate to our experts, to our dev team if necessary, to solve stuff. But I encourage you just to try it, right? Everything I just did today, you can do on your own. You know, there's no, no, no bed behind the curtain there making that work. Um, you can follow us on uh, Twitter and Facebook if you want. So with that, um, I'll, I'll stop and, and ask questions. So if you have questions, go ahead and type them into the, uh, into the chat. I've got another window, another machine up with the chat window so I can see what people's doing. Or if there's any questions, Raj, Mary, if there are Brock, if there are questions you want me to that already came up in the chat window, uh, let me know and I can answer those as well. Scanning through the chat to see. Looks like everything was taken care of. Okay, I got a question about data sharing. Questions here. All right. Well, Raj, Mary, any other anything else I missed that you think I should be uh, mentioning? Uh, Brock asking, can we delete files from Go? Yep. So you can do that. In two ways, you know, from the web interface, if we go back to the start transfer window, I'll go ahead and delete a file just to show you how it works. 
Now I remembered my state from last time. Let's go ahead and get rid of some of this gunk that I did during this demo. So we'll select, let's get rid of a couple of these directories. So I select my files, and you see in the GUI this uh, drop down right here. So this is where I can delete files, or I can create, and I can also do make gears. I can make new directories. So I can delete selected files. It's going to actually run this reliably in the background. I also didn't talk about the label feature, which you see here. On every transfer, I can, I can enter a label, which gives me an easy way to find it and search it and things like that, but I don't have to. So there we just submitted it. And I can also do it from the command line. So if we uh, log back in, oops, log back in, help, we have an RM command. So if I do like an LS on uh, my laptop, or my, I'll do my Linux for the fun of it. Um, you know, which was that Linux machine over at CI, and right, I can do rm my Linux on, uh, what should we do, rm minus r on my Linux, hey, whoops, pound tilde slash go data. All right, so... Do LSs can also do make deers, as I said. So if we want to do like a make deer my Linux colon tilde slash foo. Uh, there it is. All right, so all the standard shell commands for interacting with your file system. All right, would you be willing to provide a copy of that example bash script? Yeah, certainly, no problem. I think it might even be up on the website from one of our past tutorials. If not, Mary, maybe you can take it to do, to make sure we get it up there and get it out with the materials. And we should probably also make sure it still works properly. It's been about four or five months since I've uh, done that one. And All right, any other questions? If you want to use the REST API for anything, we also have uh, open source uh, Linux and Python client libraries that wrap around it. The REST API is real simple, you know, so it's pretty easy to use from any language, but you know, make a few of these things even easier. So if you want to do some more advanced stuff, that's an option as well. Um, copy of the slides, yep, we'll make sure we send around the copy of the slides to people. All right, any more questions? I'll, I'll hang around on the, the chat for a few more minutes. If you have any more, feel free. Otherwise, you know, thank you for uh, joining us today. As I said, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything at all, uh, don't hesitate to drop us a note at support at Globus Online. And we're always happy to hear encouraging uh, you know, uh, news about how it's going. In fact, one thing we do is run a uh, uh, user of the month user of the quarter case studies that we published just to give other users a good feel for how people are using this. So if you if you have a particular success with Globus Online or happy with it, you know, go ahead and submit to that on our website. Uh, do we have to leave our connection to go open for long transfers and what notifications do we get? It's a great question. Uh, no, nope, you do not. Um, you can log out at any point from the web interface, the command line interface, Everything you're doing will just keep running. That's one of the big advantages, right? You hand it off to us, walk away, and you can come back at any point and check it. Um, notifications you'll get is when your job is done, you'll get an email. If and then on certain failure conditions, like you know transfer or fault conditions, you know that you know your credential expired or certain critical faults that we can't recover from, like you know quota exceeded. We won't kill your job still, we'll just suspend it and notify you so you can either try and clean it up. And as long as your job is making progress, we'll keep working on it. So as long, you know, so as, long as it's making progress for up in, in the last 24 hours, we'll keep trying. If, you know, if it fa stalls out, fails at some point, then we'll, we'll cancel it. And then the last place where you'll get notifications is we actually run our operations team monitors progress. So we're always watching for weird things going on, you know, systems not working, stuff like that. So sometimes you'll also get email from our support people saying, you know, this, this seems to be happening on this system. 
you know, do you, you know, do you want to kill it? Do you want to do something or, you know, or things we can do to help you? <clears throat> what does that mean for endpoints going away and coming back? So an endpoint, by, by going away, coming back, you know, grid FTP servers, the machines they're running on, you know, they go down, right? They, um, you know, they fail, they get down, taken down for maintenance, all these sorts of things. Um, you know, again, that doesn't phase us. We'll, when they come back up, we'll just keep trying. So we will take care of all that. Um, on a Globus Connect, you know, my, my Globus Connect endpoints are just endpoints as well. So I could even do things like shut down my laptop, go to a different network, you know, connect from Starbucks, and that Globus Connect will connect right back up and continue right where it left off in any transfers to or from my machine. Um, I can also, you know, control various things from here as well, see how things are going. Um, other questions? Looks like somebody's typing. Is there a way to help users select appropriate endpoints in terms of the network distance or transfer speed? At the moment, we do not have <coughs> excuse me, any sort of selection uh, process. Right now, the, you know, the endpoints are specific systems out there, and you're in full control. One thing I will mention is that an endpoint, you can actually, if I've got a cluster, say, with multiple head nodes, I can actually install GCMU or Grid FTP servers on multiple of those head nodes and configure all of them against the same endpoint. So now Globus Online has multiple paths that it can talk to a particular endpoint, right? So if one server goes down, it will automatically fail over and use the other one. It'll also automatically load balance between those Grid FTP servers on the endpoint. So, for example, some of the ones you saw, like the, the uh, NERSC ones, um, I think LCRC might have a couple of grid FTP servers under there. You know, you as a user don't have to worry about that. Um, so we take care of selecting, the, selecting ones that will work. In terms of, you know, network distance and stuff like that, you know, we've got some work coming down the pipe that we're going to be showing more at, at uh, Globus World in April uh, around more kind of, you know, sort of more capabilities around things like storage and replication and selection and some of these sorts of things. So this is future work for us. Um, you know, and it's worth mentioning too that what you're seeing here with Globus Online is just really version one or 1.8, I guess, technically, of a very long and ambitious set of capabilities that we'll be introducing. So Keep watching, especially over the next five, six months of new capabilities in addition to file transfer that will be available uh, that you can use with Globus Online as well, including some down the directions of what I think you're asking. Uh, Brock's mentioning, I'll just mention this out loud, Umish, Flux, and Nynx will very soon have 10 gigabit network connections. Login hosts only have one gig, so I assume that implies uh, you know, you'll have the necessary grid FTP infrastructure to be able to do really high bandwidth transfers to and from those machines. All right, any other questions? Yeah, Brock's mentioning also login hosts have CPU time limits that limit file transfers using SCP. Right, so this is actually a very common thing we see is, you know, why use this over SCP, right? First off, things like this where, you know, SCP, you know, running on your login nodes can often have bad effects. Second, it's just slow comparatively, right? We, um, you know, local area transfers, SCP does reasonably well. We can still probably do quite a lot better. Um, you know, wide area transfers makes huge, huge differences, right? We, we're we well tuned, you know, SCP is really not tuned for wide area and it's not tuned for lots of files and that stuff we do exceedingly well. So we've had users literally get factor of 100 speed ups on transfers of Globus Online versus SCP. Now your mileage may vary, 
but I think you'll, you should see good results from that. Um, one question that also sometimes comes is uh, with encryption, Globus Online by default, it's authenticating everything, but it's not encrypting your data in transfer, in transit over the wire. That feature is actually coming next week with our release. You'll see a new option on the SCP and transfer commands, minus minus encrypt. So if you want to turn on encryption as well, you'll, you'll be able to do that optionally. Um, you know, probably slow things down a little bit, although in practice, not much, you know, because in practice, the limiting factor tends to be the, the file systems on the endpoints uh, for moving data. At this point, CPUs have gotten so fast that it's not too big a problem. Question, how does Grid FTP compare to BB FTP? Uh, both, both of you use parallel TCP streams, right? So, great question. The, um, I'd say under the covers, right, if, if you look down at what's actually happening down at the sort of server network, you know, TCP stream layer, they're doing almost exactly the same things, right? Parallel TCP streams, tuning of the network, all the kind of stuff to make them go fast, right? So really the big difference is all of the simplicity you just saw, right? Is that it's trip and, and all the reliability, all the manageability, all the stuff that takes it from a command line tool that you have to worry about, you know, if things fail, you have to restart them, you have to diagnose the problems, you have to figure out how to tune it to something we just take care of, that we take care of the reliability, we take care of the tuning, right? So performance-wise, they should be comparable. You know, will they be identical? You know, I'm sure there'll be some cases where you can tune up for BBFTP more, if you want, you can actually, if you really know what you're doing with Globus Online, you can actually tune it up using the transfer command. We do actually expose the, the, the basic capabilities for controlling your parallelism and that sort of stuff, but most users shouldn't have to, and we should be able to get pretty close to the sorts of sort of the maximum performance you're going to get from hand-tuned. All right, can admins install GCMU and force encryption? At the moment, no. Um, send that. You know, I'd you know, actually, now that you mention it, it's an obvious thing to want, um, uh, but we actually haven't, hadn't thought of that one. So why don't you please send mail to support at Globus Online uh, asking for that feature. That should be a relatively simple thing. You know, one of the things we're planning on adding is some, is some properties to endpoints so that I can uh, control uh, things like that. And so... Um, uh, that, that would be actually a really great add uh, to do that. See, I transferred 40 terabytes from NAS to UMIS using BBFTP and suffered through all the things you mentioned and didn't get uh, mentioned as user of the month either. <laughs> all right, so go try it with Globus Online. Hopefully it'll all work beautifully for you and then submit and we'll try and make you user of the month. All right, any other questions? All right, looks like we're at 10 o'clock, so with that, we'll wrap up. Again, any, any more questions, don't hesitate to drop us email at support at globusonline.org. Um, I'm on that list, Raj, many others, so uh, we look forward to having you use the service. Thank you very much.